Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Ruskies and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we're here to do the quarter year crisis book tag. Now, I think we're all super familiar with the very popular like mid-year book freakout tag or the end of year book tag. I haven't really seen any other book tag that kind of are a check in point between the start of the year and the mid-year or the mid-year and the end of year. And so when I saw Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots do this tag, I thought it was a fantastic idea and I wanted to do it. I don't like to do too terribly many tag videos on my channel just because I kind of consider them filler content. But like I said, I love to do these check-in tags. So I wanted to do this one. Now, I believe this tag was originally created by Roshan. I'm so sorry if I'm completely butchering that name, but I will be sure to leave her channel linked down below along with a video that Aoife did that I saw that inspired me to do this tag. Now Aoife's was the very first video that I had seen doing this tag. I'm not really intimately familiar with the questions and I certainly don't have any answers prepared for the tag questions. So we're going to see how this goes. We're just going to go ahead and jump right in. So the very first question is how many books have you read so far this year? And literally this morning as I was getting ready, I finished book number 50, which was Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. So I have successfully completed 50 books so far this year. Question number two, have you already found a book you think might be a 2024 favorite? If not, what's the best book you've read so far this year. I know for sure that I found a new 2024 favorite because I have now found a new favorite of all time, The Woman by Kristen Hanna. I have talked about Kristen Hanna multiple times on this channel. She is one of my favorite authors of all time and this is certainly the pinnacle of her career. This is certainly one of her best and like I said it is one of my new favorite books of all time. This is set during the Vietnam War period. It follows our main character Frankie McGrath and at the very beginning of the story she is 19 years old. She's in college to be a nurse and the war in Vietnam is building strength and momentum and her brother has actually signed up to go over to Vietnam and Frankie decides that she wants to follow him. At the time of the start of the story, like I said, she's in college. She's a privileged young white girl living on Coronado Island off the coast of California. She really knows absolutely nothing of war, but she goes, she enlists in the army and she gets sent over there. And needless to say, it is literally a trial by fire. She goes to Vietnam completely unprepared and she soon finds herself in the most harrowing of situations. Soldiers are coming in with their guts torn open, limbs blown off, napalm berms all over their body. And she is building her competency as a combat nurse during this time. So the first half of the story is her in Vietnam as a nurse. And then the second half of the story follows what happens when she gets home and she arrives home to a less than enthusiastic reception. People are not proud of her for her service. Her parents are actively ashamed of her that she went to Vietnam. She's a woman. She's not supposed to be in Vietnam. In fact, a lot of people don't even believe that women were in Vietnam. But not only that, but America was in turmoil over the war. A lot of people didn't think we should have been over there. There were protests going on all across the country and people were taking their frustration and desperation about the war out on the veterans who were returning from war. And Frankie was no different. She was called names. She was spat at just because she went and served her country. And so she's having a really hard time dealing with the reception that she's getting back at home. She kind of wishes that she was back in Vietnam because back in Vietnam, she found herself. She found out who she was, what she was capable of. And back at home, she's very lost. And of course she's dealing with PTSD, but during this time, PTSD was not really a known thing and it certainly wasn't talked about. So she is struggling and she also starts getting addicted to pills and stuff to try to cope with the PTSD. So her life is really unraveling and falling apart. So you're following the aftermath of her time in Vietnam and as she's trying to put her life back together. And it was just one of the most beautiful, raw, harrowing books that I've ever read in my entire life. I love this from start to finish. There was only really one minor complaint about this story that I had. It was a storyline that started in Vietnam and continued towards the end of the book that I really didn't think needed to be there. But overall, this book was absolutely perfection. It is a difficult read, but it is a very important read because the entire purpose of this read was to shine light on the experiences of the women of Vietnam. And so I just absolutely love this. I cannot recommend it enough. And of course, it was an easy, easy five stars. Question number three is any one star books or least favorite book of the year? So I don't have a one star book because I don't typically let it get that far. If I'm really not enjoying a book that much, I'm probably going to DNF it. But I would say if I had to choose my least favorite book so far, it was probably going to be The Last One by Will Dean. I have absolutely adored the other releases by Will Dean. And so The Last One is his newest release. And I went into it confidently thinking that it was going to be a new favorite of mine as well. It was completely different from what I was expecting. It felt like it was written by an entirely different author. And I just, I really didn't enjoy it. It follows our main character, Kaz. She and her boyfriend are on a luxury liner heading from the UK to America. And one day Kaz wakes up and her boyfriend is gone. And basically everybody else on the ship is gone. She gets up, she's trying to find somebody. She eventually runs into three other people who are still on the ship and they are literally the only ones left there. There is nobody else on the ship and they have no idea what's going on. And it soon becomes about survival because the electricity shuts off. They don't have access to all of the food stores and things like that. And they're trying to figure out how to survive on this ship. And they come to find out that it's kind of like a reality television show that they didn't consent to. They're on camera. They're being broadcast all across the world. They're supposed to win a big monetary prize if they make it through. And they're also being put through like these challenges that they have to survive and stuff. And I don't know y'all, it just was not well executed. I would say the majority 
majority of the story was very long. It was very drawn out. It could have easily been cut by a few hours and that would have helped it be paced better. But also like I just didn't care. I really didn't care about any of the characters. Not because they were super unlikable or anything but just because this was more plot driven than character driven. So you really don't get in-depth knowledge about any of the characters that you're following. You're completely in Kaz's head the entire time so you don't even get the additional benefit of the other characters perspectives. So it was very flat. It was very two-dimensional in my opinion and because I really didn't care about any of the characters I didn't care what happened to them and I was having a hard time suspending my disbelief. I couldn't get behind it. There was just something so incredibly unbelievable about the story and it was a huge disappointment for me based on how much I had really appreciated Will Dean in the past. So ultimately it was just a big fat dud for me and I gave it a 2.5 stars. Question number four is most read genre so far. Now I would probably have to pull up my reading spreadsheet in order to tell you the exact numbers but I don't even really need to look at it to tell you that it's probably going to be thrillers that is the most read genre because that's pretty much always the most read genre that I read at any given point. My thrillers are statistically significantly higher than any of the other genres that I read so definitely thrillers. Question number five is a book that surprised you. So after taking a look at all of the books that I've read so far this year there have actually been quite a few surprises because I'm reading a lot of books this year that are very much outside of my comfort zone because I'm doing the reading like my subscribers challenge and some of them I have definitely enjoyed them a lot more than I thought but for this I think I'm going to go ahead and select Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Now I read The Martian last year for the very first time. I know that that book is a lot of people's favorite book but it didn't really hit that way for me and so when I picked this up I wasn't really expecting to love it as much as I did but this follows our main character Dr. Ryland Grace. He is a scientist and at the very beginning of the story he is waking up and he has no memory of where he is or why he is there but he is basically on a spaceship in the middle of space and you're following him as he's getting his memories back and he's realizing why he is there. He is essentially on a suicide mission and he is going into space to try to stop astrophage which is this organic life form that is essentially eating the energy from the sun and so you're following him as he's trying to figure out this problem trying to figure out how to survive. What's really interesting about this story is that while he's in the middle of space he encounters an alien life form. He calls this alien life form Rocky and Rocky is on his own spaceship trying to do the same thing for his people. So you're following Ryland and Rocky as they are starting to work together. They are building a shared vocabulary and shared experience as they're trying to save both of their planets and I thought that it was just a really beautiful solid heartwarming friendship. It was extremely clever and yes these are definitely very science heavy but you don't need to really understand all of the science in order to enjoy the book. I very much enjoyed this a lot more than I thought. But I still just had such a great time with the story. I still think about the story. I still recommend the story to people especially those who are looking for a very good solid sci-fi and I absolutely was not expecting to be as blown away by the story as I was so highly recommend this one as well. Question number six is a book that's come out in 2024 already that you want to read but haven't yet. If I had to think of one right off the top of my head it would definitely be House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass. and the reason why I haven't really tried to dig into that one yet is just because I still need to read A Court of Silver Flame. Once I read A Court of Silver Flame I will be 100% caught up on every other one of her series but also there is another very specific reason why I want to read A Court of Silver Flames and if you know you know so I really don't feel like I want to jump into House of Flame and Shadow without having first read A Court of Silver Flames and there's only so many chunky Sarah J Mass fantasies that I can read in a year. I definitely need breaks in between them so since I've already read Kingdom of Ash this year and if I go into A Court of Silver Flames later this year I don't necessarily think I'm going to get to House of Flame and Shadow. I will also say Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. That is the continuation of the Empire of the Vampire series and I'm really looking forward to reading that as well. We'll see if I'm able to get to both of those at some point this year. Question number seven is one goal you made that you're succeeding at. I feel like I'm pretty much succeeding at most if not all of my goals. One goal that I'm definitely succeeding at is getting through the reading challenges. I'm doing a few year-long reading challenges and even though we're currently in April I'm at least 50% of the way done with basically every single one of them. I'm also doing the reading like my subscribers challenge and I'm definitely doing very well at that. My goal is to read 24 books that y'all recommended to me and that's an average of two every single month which I've been successfully able to do so far and hopefully that will continue. Also certainly succeeding at my reading goal. I'm several books ahead of schedule and meeting. I think I set myself at like 125 or something like that. So I feel like a lot of the goals that I've set for myself I'm really succeeding at. Question number eight is one goal you made you need to focus on. I think if I had to select one it would definitely be continuing series. So far this year I've been better at starting series rather than continuing series but I'm not necessarily mad about that because I had a really big goal of completing or catching up in series last year and I did that. I don't have nearly as many in progress series as I did so I feel like there's a lot more room now in my reading to start new series. I definitely do have a handful of series that only have like one book left. All I need to read is that one book and then I will be done or caught up in the series and so I really want to do that. I really want to focus more on that. Like I said I have A Court of Silver Flames for the Akatar series. I have Winter for the Lunar Chronicle series. There are definitely a lot of things that if I just read one more book I will be caught up or completed in the series and I want to focus more on that. But for the most part I'm not really mad that I've started quite a few series so far this year because there's room to do it and it just means that I'm now prioritizing series that have been on my radar for quite a while and I'm also pretty proud of myself for doing that. And then the very final question is new to you booktubers, bookstagrammers, book talkers for 2024 that you recommend. I have actually followed a handful of new to me booktubers recently that I think I'm going to go ahead and recommend. So one I would like to recommend 
one is books and heather she's actually another mississippi booktuber there are definitely not very many of those she is a teacher and i've really been enjoying her content she's very sweet she's very down to earth i like her reading vlogs and things like that so i would definitely recommend her i do of course also want to recommend Brittany from be the book nerd i think i followed her last year so i've been following her for several months now but she is still a very new booktube channel she still deserves a lot more growth so please be sure to go ahead and check her out i just love her personality she also has a very chaotic dog that is sometimes featured in her videos as well so i want to go ahead and give her some love i also want to give some love to laura from laura reads she is a content creator that i found a few weeks ago and i've really been enjoying her content she's also been joining us in sprints so it's been really nice getting to know her that way she's very calm and soft-spoken in her videos but i can tell you that that girl knows how to cause some chaos so she's a lot of fun i also recommend her and i think the last one that i want to recommend is kate from over at kate louise she is another brand new small channel that i've really been enjoying i've been calling her my little sister on the internet she's just so sweet and cheerful she reads very widely like i do and i really appreciate that so she might be reading fantasy one day and romance another maybe even a thriller or a literary fiction or things like that i love a booktuber who reads widely such as myself so those are some of the new to me booktubers that i wanted to recommend and i will try to remember to leave them linked all down below for you in case you want to go ahead and check them out otherwise please feel free to comment so far your favorite and least favorite book of the year or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me an alien emoji in honor of project hail mary and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already i typically post two days a week one on wednesdays one on sundays and i would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which i always leave linked down below along with any books that i may talk about in a video until next time y'all bye holy cow i stumbled my way through that one